Hi guys, it's Fatima, mostly known as Can Call Me Artist on social media, and today I'll be painting Jungkook from BTS with gouache. I'm going to start this drawing by taking the Windsor & Newton fineliner in sepia to outline my sketch. I usually only do this with my gouache painting since gouache is opaque and I really don't want to lose my sketch lines when painting. And I prefer using a brown shade since it will blend in more with the gouache than black and it will be less harsh. The sketchbook I'm using is a watercolour sketchbook by Mosery with 300 GSM cotton paper. I love how colours blend on this paper and I really love the texture of the final result of the painting as well. It's a texture that I've never come across before and I would definitely purchase again. I do sometimes outline my watercolour paintings but when I do I only outline the really dark darkest shades um, unlike how I did it here. Now I'm going to mix my colours and I'm going to be using the Windsor & Newton designer gouache. It's very 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 nice. I love how um, the finish is as well as the opacity and yeah the coverage. I really love using a limited colour palette because it helps me avoid getting my colours very muddy. This colour palette consists of alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, um, burnt sienna, burnt umber sometimes, violet i'm oh, sorry i can't remember 100 percent but also yellow ochre your black and white as well as you can see whenever i start painting i always mix all my colors or the colors i see mainly of course as i go i'm going to need more colors and more transitional shades but for now this is good You might be wondering why is the painting so patchy and that's because I am creating an underlayer. I really love creating underlayers and I never actually used to do it before but now it really helps me and I get why people do it. It really helps me establish the colour placements as well as the colour values um, in my portrait without having like a solid layer. And this really helps relieve my anxiety because I'm not taking it that seriously and I know that I can fix it later on with the actual thicker gouache layer. For example, if one of the colours doesn't go with the rest of the colours, I can change that later with the thicker gouache layer because gouache is opaque so it will cover up the underlayer. With this colour layer, I'm trying to also figure out the facial structure and the different shadows and lights. I really love Jungkook's face. I know that sounds really weird, but he has a really nice paintable face. I can't even explain it. But if I were to try to explain it, it's the way that the highlights and the shadows hit on the face. After painting in the underlayer, I'm going to create a layer all over the skin with a thicker opacity of paint. I actually created this colour thicker than I wanted, so the colours underneath didn't end up showing through, but I did want it to be a little bit thinner in consistency. I didn't mind this little accident because I kind of remembered the colour placements and the shadows that I wanted to create in the face. I actually forgot to paint the underlayer for the right hand side of the face so I'm just filling that in now. I usually don't intentionally wait for the gouache colours to dry um, and I just keep moving and working on the piece as I go. And as you can see I'm trying to add more form and structure to the face now with darker shades and different colours. As you can see, I'm not focusing 100% on blending the colours, but actually placing them and focusing on transitional shades. The way I paint is very random, like one minute I'll be working on the skin, the next minute I'm just working on the details and the eyes. And that way, it allows me to wait for the gouache colours to dry so I can see their true colours because gouache does dry down a bit darker than when applied. 
and that helps me figure out my next move on the skin while I fill out the details and the easier parts of the face. For the brushes, I'm using a very wide variety to help me with different parts of the face. For example, here I'm using a very fine brush to paint the face with a lot of details. This brush is by Winsor & Newton and it can create really fine details which I really love. It really gives me the precision I need to add all the details that I like. Now I'm going to start building up the highlights of the face using a lighter shade. Also, I want you to keep in mind that this is a 3 hour slash 4 hour painting condensed in a 13 minute video and most of the actions are very repetitive because of the way the gouache dries down. What I mean by that is how the gouache paints dry out darker so it ends up not being as light as I hoped it would be. But also most of the time I'm also trying to figure out the facial structure and trying to get that right. If you want to know how I sketch and also mix my colours as well as how I paint using both gouache and watercolours, I do have some classes available with Class 101 that you should definitely check out. I'll leave a link in the description box down below. The way I blend my colours after placing them is with a clean and damp brush and then what I do is gently feather out the edges of the colour I placed. You should make sure that your paintbrush is not too wet as that will then activate a lot of the colour and then it will drag it around. And this will make your painting very patchy so instead after cleaning your brush use a towel to gently dry the brush. For this technique to work, you need to use a thicker consistency of gouache as then it will have more coverage which will avoid us rubbing the area too much revealing the bottom of the paper. The reason I love gouache so much is because it's water soluble so after I place down the colours it will melt and blend and be reactivated with water which is amazing. I also love that I can control the opacity of the paints but also how it is very full coverage. It being opaque really allows me to create the depth and also build up the layers to create that opacity and the look that I want. I am now starting to paint the hair but that doesn't mean that the face is finished yet. I do go back into the face to correct the facial structure as the black kind of lets me see um, and lets me establish my darkest and like lightest value. Um, so yeah. Don't be alarmed, the hair is not red, I am just creating the underlayer for the bust cut he has, or the fade, shall I say, as I'm going to add tiny hairs and some of the skin usually peeks through with that kind of fade. Also, my favourite way to create a more realistic hairline is to use the skin colour with a really fine brush to go in and create hair strands going in to avoid it being very blocky. As you can see, I'm going back now and highlighting the face even more and this time I'm using a square brush because I really want to incorporate some texture within the skin and to have like a painterly effect. Yes, effect. <laughs> Before with my paintings, I really really loved having everything smooth and for some paintings I still do like that effect but I started to appreciate the texture of 
the paintings more so I am trying to be more experimental with my style now. I also used to really want to match the colour 100% to my reference but I found that the colours are sometimes dull and the more brighter and more saturated colours end up working very well for my paintings. So lately I've been trying to be more brave with my colours and this reference really challenged me as it was a very colourful piece like there's a lot of greens and red within the lighting which helped me experiment with those types of colours. Like at the beginning when I was using the reds and greens you could really like pick out the colours and you were like whoa that's kind of bright the skin doesn't have those colours but instead the skin has only nudes and browns but actually that's not correct as your environment kind of changes the colours that is reflected on your face and also how the photo was taken and if there's any filters on the face and by the end of this painting it does look like skin and I did use abnormal colours. What I'm trying to say and prove is that you really don't need to focus on colour matching but just focus on building up the contrast as well as the different values um, like the tones and the shades. Like I found that establishing your lights and darks is the most important in painting a portrait. One practice that really helped me with this in my journey is painting with black and white because with black and white you're not really focusing on the colours and colour mixing but you're just focusing on establishing the light and darks. Of course after this you can slowly try adding colour into your palette and experiment with adding different tones using that same colour. You don't need to be too too adventurous when starting out with this but being experimental really helps. Like even if you get the colours wrong it's okay because you can realise your mistakes and move forward which will help improve your art skills. The face is now mostly done so I'm just moving on to the clothes now. The main focus of my paintings is the face so I don't really focus a lot on the clothing but I still do give it a fair amount of attention. If you're liking the video so far don't forget to give this video a thumbs up it will really help me out and also I have a question for you guys like which part of the process do you enjoy the most like for me I just love painting the eyes but also adding the final details and touches is just so satisfying to me and so fun because you know things are getting wrapped up. I don't have anything to say for now so I'll just let you enjoy the process of the rest of the painting and I'll talk to you nearer the end of the video. In today's video we learned how I use gouache and the process of one of my BTS paintings. In the next video I'm going to bring you another art filled video. So I'll see you soon. Bye!